Hi. In this video, we're going to go through measuring noise figure with RFMX. Now, in particular, we're going to be going through measuring it interactively in the RFMX software panel and also doing it programmatically using an example. For this exercise, uh, I'm using my 5668 in my PXI chassis here, along with the mini circuits amplifier and a noise source. So we will be doing just the Y factor method this time. So in this lesson, uh, it doesn't make a difference whether or not you know LabVIEW or not. The examples that will show uh, will be in LabVIEW, but the API has uh, similar corollaries in .NET and in C, so you should be able to use the same approaches. Now, for this lesson, by the end of it, you should feel comfortable knowing what to do if you want to take a noise figure, Y factor in particular, measurement on a vector signal analyzer or vector signal transceiver. But we're not going to go into teaching about noise figure per se. We're just going to try to get you up and running. But keep your eyes peeled for a, another lesson that should be coming out soon where we go into it a little bit deeper in terms of all the settings that are available and uh, some of the other uh, kind of review of Y figure in particular. So that being said, let's go ahead and get started. So what you're seeing here is just basically the RFMX soft front panel, just in its default, you just opened it up mode. So to get started taking a noise figure measurement, step one, go ahead and enable that measurement underneath the measurements button and the measurements pane. And you'll see here, indeed, uh, we have a noise figure as an individual element to choose from. Let's go ahead and select noise figure. It'll disable all the other measurements because you can't really do like a spectral measurements and noise figure at the same time. Uh, and I, you'll notice that we've a lot of things just jumping around on the screen. Uh, of course, this is all nonsense. We haven't calibrated. We don't haven't put any information in. So let's go ahead and actually look at what we need to do, the minimum steps to go ahead and configure it. First off, let's go ahead and get the reference level set up appropriately, of course, we're measuring noise, so we have to make sure that we don't let the analyzer's noise dominate the system. The way that we're gonna do that is we're actually gonna leverage two different things. We're gonna leverage the settings right here for the maximum gain and the maximum noise figure. Now these are not absolute values, but basically they'll feed into when we ask for the recommended ref reference level. Now I know that in particular for us, we're using a mini circuits amp. It's got about 20 dB worth of gain and about a 4 dB noise figure. Actually, I'll even bump it up to five just to give ourselves a little bit more room. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit recommended reference level. Now you'll see what it actually did is it actually set that reference level to about negative 68, which is about what that our analyzer or 5668 should be for its kind of optimized mode. Now at this point, we're definitely still not measuring noise figure. You'll see we even have this warning up top that's indicating to us if we click on this eye that we have this second stage calibration data is not available, which is basically saying you haven't taken the, um, you haven't analyzed your analyzer per se at this point. So once again, the results are still junk. Uh, so let's ignore that for the moment. We'll even hit stop up top so it stops jumping around on us. Not a bad thing to do, it's a little bit less annoying. But what we'll do is we'll go ahead and key in the needed values down here for the measurement setup. Now, what I will want to do for this one is I'm going to change the bandwidth from 100K to be about 1 meg to 5 meg. Good rules of thumb. I'm just going to go ahead and open up about 5 megahertz. Gives us nice wide bandwidth, uh, kind of equal noise. And open up the measurement interval to be about 10 milliseconds. These are just some pretty good defaults. Now, by default, it's going to ask for which frequencies do you want to calibrate and measure at. Well, I only want to do it at really two frequencies. I'm going to do 1 gigahertz and 2 gigahertz. So for me, the way I like to do it is I like to actually change this to frequency list. You could do start, stop, and step, or start and stop in number of points. I just like doing the frequency list so I know exactly what I'm doing. I'll clear the list that's currently there. You see, get rid of all that. And I'll just type in one gig, and then of course two gigahertz. And there we go, now we have two frequencies that we'll be testing against, you know, turn on some averaging as well. It's a little bit slower, the default is fast, so we're gonna slow it down, but it's gonna give us more accurate results. Click on that gear, it's gonna bring up that spec, the, the tab to configure more of the measurement for which we already have some of these things entered in. Uh, but the really the thing to enter in at this point to do that calibration is we have to say in particular, what is that noise sources performance uh, that you'll see right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and enter in the ENR value, the equivalent um, noise ratio uh, at two frequencies, that one gigahertz and two gigahertz. So for me, I'm just going to, you can copy and paste from clipboard. I'm just going to enter them in manually. One gigahertz, uh, two gigahertz. And one of the things we'll actually do here is uh, we'll see, I, I actually have it set up 
and it's currently on the amplifier. So we're gonna go ahead and um, disconnect this here. And then what we're gonna do actually for this calibration stage is go right into the analyzer itself. So it's gonna give me the ability to truly just characterize the analyzer's noise performance and uh, the noise source's performance with the analyzer. Of course, we'll be adding the DUT in in just a moment. Now on this, one of the things you'll see is uh, on this noise source in particular, you can see we already have some noise values that are noted in between here. So we're just gonna be picking the one gigahertz and the two gigahertz values along the way. So let's go ahead and enter those in and we're gonna go ahead and put in, it should be 5.5, 5.67, 5.67, 5 5.57 dB, and there we go. So now we have the ENR value set in there, we've got the kind of the expected reference level, and now we're gonna go ahead and do that calibrate stage. The way that we do that is we just basically go up to, there you go, calibration that we have set up here and we'll hit the button. Now once it does this, it's gonna measure the analyzer's performance at the frequencies, and then it's also going to go ahead and turn the noise source on and then measure the noise, the new noise, with the hot and cold per se. All right, so now we've run the, if you click the calibrate, and you can see that the screen behind changed. Now we have, instead of this large table of frequencies, we now just have one gigahertz and two gigahertz, and it actually went through and it did indeed measure the noise figure of the analyzer itself. Now, uh, we'll talk about whether or not these are good values or bad values and how to know that in future videos. For now, once again, we're just getting you up and running. But now that we've gone through, we've done that connection, we've done the calibration, we're gonna go ahead and connect that DUT into the system. Now, one of the things that I had mentioned before was that we've got this mini circuits uh, uh, amplifier. Let me see if I can zoom in on it here. And indeed, you can see, uh, hopefully it is that ZX uh, 64016E, so it's a connectorized uh, amplifier that we've got in the system. And we're just gonna go ahead and plumb it right up into uh, our analyzer, so nothing too crazy there. Uh, so now that we have our device connected, our noise source on our device, uh, we're gonna go ahead and uh, just connect and just say go again. We're gonna run again. And now the way that we do that is uh, just you find the run button uh, up in this portion up top. And uh, let's see what we got there, there we go. And now we're gonna go hit run there and it should take that noise figure measurement. So there you go. So now the values are jumping around on the screen. What are we actually looking at? Is it close to what we need? Well, the way that I would evaluate that one is basically I'm gonna go ahead and look at uh, the DUT noise figure that's listed here. And also something to make it easier for my viewing, I'm probably gonna turn off auto scale here and uh, go ahead and put it at the minimum of about three and the maximum of about five. And you'll see that the values indeed are moving around a couple of tenths of a dB, but we're definitely in the ballpark. So let's go ahead and look at that amplifier um, and see what we, if we're in that right range. Well, first and foremost, uh, we've got um, uh, our low noise figure set to about 3.9 uh, dB. So it looks like we're pretty good in the ballpark. We saw 3.2 to about 3.8. And if we go to those two frequencies further down on the list here, uh, you should see that indeed we have one gigahertz as a noise figure around that 3.82 and two gigahertz as about 3.97. Now this, these are our rated frequencies uh, that we have along the line. So, you know, they can be better than that and that's great. Uh, we can go through and we can do, you know, more tuning on the analyzer, tuning on the measurement to try to get an even more accurate value but I feel pretty comfortable saying that using the soft front panel, um, taking the measurements and the calibration step that we did and having the system nice and stable and of course heated up for 30 minutes, we're getting pretty reasonable values for the amplifier that we have here. All right, so next up, let's go ahead and hit how would we do this same measurement, this calibration and measure from the API itself. Okay, so we're in live view here. We're using the example finder to get to the examples. Uh, in particular, the way that we'll work through that is we will look at the uh, hardware I.O. that you'll see there, uh, modular instruments, uh, RFMX, and then SPECAN, which is where noise figure is. And then of course, we'll just scroll down to SPECAN, NF, Y-Factor, and there you go. There's the example that we have already open behind us. 
Now, in order to get this configured, you know, of course, you have to set that resource name to the VSA. And we're going to, in particular, let's go ahead and set the one thing that's probably the most important to do is that calibrate stage. So this measurement needs to get run twice. Now, when you run calibrate, it will store the information on the computer. So you don't necessarily have to do it all in one automated sweep, of course. So we're going to go ahead and set up those same configuration values that we had in the soft front panel. In particular, we're going to go ahead and set that measurement bandwidth to that 5 megahertz, measurement interval to about 10 milliseconds. We're going to go ahead and turn averaging on. And now we're going to go ahead and set those frequencies and ENR values that we had before as well. So let's see, that's the 1 gigahertz and uh, 2 gigahertz. And then there's a 5.67 and 5.57, 5.57 dB. All right, so now I've got to go ahead and I have to reconnect the system for that calibration stage. We're going to do that. I'll be right back. Okay, so I've went and connected my noise source directly to my analyzer. So just nothing else in between. And we're going to con continue configuring this example just a little bit further. In particular, we want to go ahead and set up the uh, points or really the list of frequencies we want to test at. Uh, so I'm going to set that to that 1 gigahertz, uh, 1 gigahertz as well and then move it up to two gigahertz. So it's gonna test it at two points. Uh, and then the reference level, we're gonna go ahead and use that recommended reference level, uh, get max gain at 20 and noise figure indeed at about five dB. All right, so now we've got, uh, I believe everything enabled and set up that we need to. We can ignore this whole section of loss here in the middle. Uh, of course, it's going to allow us to get more accurate results, but we're worried about just getting a value for right now. So let's go ahead and just run the VI as is and see what we get. Okay, the VI is finished running. It ran its calibration routine. And one of the things that you'll see is that it did state what the analyzer's noise figure was for the specific configuration. So once again, we need to keep in mind that every time that you run this calibration step, you can only run measurements steps in the way that it's been calibrated at this point or kind of characterized. So now we've run it. It's good, we get values that are about the same for both settings, that makes good sense. All right, next up, really all we should need to do is put this over into the measure mode and reconnect, or actually put the dot now in line and we'll be up in for the races. So we'll go ahead and try that. All right, we're connected back up, actually, let's go in there. And indeed we have uh, our analyzer uh, uh, connected to our dot, connected to our noise source, and of course it's powered up by that 28 volt source. And all that we should need to do at this point in time is just rerun this example and we should see dut noise figure show up with appropriate values. And there you go. So now we have two different values. We can see the results uh, in the results array up top, but we're also looking down here in the bottom for the individual noise figure that correlates pretty much what we were seeing in that soft front panel around that 3.3, 3.5 uh, definitely aligns with what we saw in the specification for the amplifier itself. Uh, and I've got good faith that we're in the ballpark for that. Okay, so at this point, hopefully you feel really comfortable with that minimal set of steps needed to perform a noise figure measurement utilizing RFMX and an NI vector signal analyzer, either interactively utilizing the soft front panel or by using one of the built-in shipping examples in your language of choice. Now there's a lot more that could be said about noise figure, either the, the different approaches like using cold source, uh, tuning for performance in terms of either speed or accuracy, uh, but we're going to be covering those in future videos. So if you are interested in noise figure, do keep an eye out for those lessons and those videos to come. Until then, good luck, and I hope to see you in the next training sessions.